Dr. Ahuva Gamliel, a naturopathic physician and licensed acupuncturist. This is my daughter Ariella. She's a two and a half uh, month old baby. As you can see, she is awake, she is content, she is peaceful and calm, and she's always like this. <laughs> Some people say that I'm blessed or lucky, and yes, I would have to agree, Ariella is a blessing, but the reason why she is so content and easy to take care of um, has a lot to do with uh, my nutrition. And so I'm here to tell you something quite sensational, actually. I'm here to tell you that the condition that is called colic does not exist because, as you can see from my daughter, there's a reason why she is so calm and happy and peaceful and just happy. <laughs> and that's because of my diet. And um, I want to share with all the mothers out there how you can also have a happy baby who is not colicky. And colic refers to babies who have upset stomach, gas, and basically um, inconcilable or um, crying that just does not stop. Well, first of all, Dr. Karp wrote this book. It's called The Happiest uh, Baby on the Block. And while it does have five um, treatments for, quote, colicky babies that are very effective to alleviate the symptoms of a constantly crying baby. Um, it does not address the core or the reason, the cause, the root of the problem. So I'm going to give you the five S's that are from the doctor's book and then I'm going to tell you also my approach. So the doctor says that the first step to calming a crying baby who just cannot stop crying, you've already changed their diaper, fed them, they're not teething or have some real reason to cry, they're just crying for no reason, then what you do is you swaddle them. So you take a blanket, you fold it in a very particular way, and this helps the baby to calm down. His theory is that the baby's arms and legs um, uncontrollably flail, and this makes them very nervous and they start crying. Well, as you can see, Ariella's arms and legs are moving, and it's not stressing her out the least bit. So why are her movements not stressing her out and some other baby's movements stressing them out? Well, um, I believe that Ariella has a calm nervous system because of the diet that I eat and when I breastfeed, um, she gets. So the next S, I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. The next S is, let's see, swaddle. Oh, side lying. So having the baby lying on the side and with the face outwards, okay? Um, the following S is shushing. So basically telling your baby shh. The next S is swinging. So putting the baby in a swing or gently rocking them. And the last S is sucking. So either breastfeeding, giving a pacifier, or a finger. So I believe that these five S's are effective in alleviating the symptoms of colic, um, but they do not address why does colic ever occur to begin with, and how, what can we do to prevent it? Um, I think that they basically distract the baby from the discomfort that they're feeling in their abdomen by focusing on an external factor such as the shushing sound or the rocking or anything else. <laughs> so. Um, Basically, as a naturopathic physician, I believe that optimal health rests on three things, and that is diet, exercise, and lifestyle. Under diet is anything that you intake, so your food, your drink, um, even I would say the air that you breathe, and emotional intake. Uh, we'll talk about more about that in under lifestyle. Exercise, your physical activity is very important. I recommend exercising at least for 30 minutes three to five times a week, and I'm going to talk about more about that in a minute. The last one is lifestyle. How much sleep are you getting? How much pollution are you exposed to? Do you smoke? Do you drink? Do you meditate? What do you do to relieve stress, etc.? So let's go through one by one, and I'm going to give you a free consultation. This is, is usually worth about $220 in my private practice for an, a, a consultation. And um, I would like for you to please share this with any pregnant ladies or moms or any child, women of childbearing age because this information is very important. So first of all, for diet. An optimal diet it consists of organic fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and um, basically it could be considered either a macrobiotic diet 
or a hypoallergenic diet is very good for breastfeeding because you don't want to expose the baby to overstimulating foods like spicy foods. You want to eliminate any refined white uh, flour and white sugar. You want to eliminate uh, high fructose corn syrup, caffeine, spicy foods, and uh, anything that might be the baby might overreact to. You want to have hypoallergenic foods. So if you're going to eat meat, which is okay, um, especially because many women become slightly anemic after having a baby and even during pregnancy, then lamb is the best red meat because it is hypoallergenic and it's also low fat. You want to eliminate any processed foods, any, anything that basically is not natural. So you want to read the ingredients of everything that you eat. Um, the baby's digestive system is uh, very pure, so it does not know how to digest um, things like aspartame and NutraSweet, um, sodas, um, high fructose corn syrup, um, red dye number 40. <laughs> okay, a baby's uh, digestive tract was never meant to encounter these additives, preservatives, chemicals, etc. So if you can clean out your diet as much as possible, drink only water and herbal teas, and uh, take only the supplements and medicines that are absolutely necessary for your well-being, then your baby is going to also reflect that. Okay, um, whenever possible, the mother should um, ideally be breastfeeding because that is the, m the healthiest thing for the baby. Babies can get gas and constipation from formula. And if you must use formula, I recommend using a soy-based formula as opposed to a dairy formula. So please read the formula and choose one that is soy-based as opposed to dairy-based. Okay, so exercise. Exercise is very important <coughs> for digestion, elimination, and just proper health maintenance and, uh, and optimizing health. There are many things that a mom can do to exercise with her baby. She can do yoga at home. She can go for a walk and put the baby in a carrier or in a stroller, ideally outside in nature if the weather permits, or if the weather does not permit, maybe inside a big shopping mall or um, other structure where the baby can, can be comfortable with the mom and they can exercise together. Um, if you can, have a babysitter and go to the gym, go to classes, go to dance classes, something that you enjoy. This should be something enjoyable for mom and baby ideally to do together um, and so forth. So exercise is the second pillar to optimal health uh, for both mom and baby because a happy healthy mom is going to naturally produce a happy healthy baby. Okay, this is not rocket science. Uh, the last thing is lifestyle. So mom, obviously you should not be smoking, drinking alcohol, um, you should get s as much sleep as you can, sleep when the baby sleeps, um, you should not expose yourself to any harmful environment, uh, any pollution, dust, mold, um, any toxins both environmentally and you don't want to hang around toxic negative people either or constantly be watching the um, negative news, etc. So if the mom has optimal health, the baby should then also reflect that. Um, the baby is a reflection of the mother. And so I notice for when I have dairy in my diet and I can uh, react to that sometimes with postnasal drip, then my baby wakes up a little bit congested. And so I know that um, the baby is also reacting to the same thing that the mommy reacts to. If I eat wheat products, I see sometimes that my daughter becomes a little bit constipated. She has a bowel movement, but um, she struggles with it. She grunts. I can see that she's uncomfortable. So then I know that I need to back off the wheat. So it's, it's very intuitive. Um, it makes a lot of sense that the, the baby is going to be a reflection of the mother. Uh, if you do all of the suggestions that I recommend and your baby still is crying out of control and you don't know what to do, I would recommend taking your baby to a craniosacral therapist who can um, correct any physiological or energetic imbalances or blockages in the baby's digestive tract. Um, also the mother might uh, benefit from massage, maybe the mother's too stressed and the baby is becoming stressed because he or she is reacting to the mother's um, emotions and um, behaviors. 
So uh, a, a relaxed mom is going to have a relaxed baby, so maybe the mom needs to get um, a babysitter for an hour and treat herself to massage. Um, so basically, if the, if the mom is relaxed, her baby should be relaxed too. So those are my um, advices on how to have a happy, healthy baby like Ariella. And um, I am sure that if you give it a try for one week, um, it will work. And um, I wish you much success um, with having a happy, healthy baby naturally. Um, for more information, please see the websites that I list on the site. And uh, visit my website, www.drgomliel.com. Thank you for watching, and I invite and encourage you to discover your optimal health and well-being as well as your babies. God bless you all.